today we're in our um, state-of-the-art movement laboratory here to talk about two things. We're going to talk about the way that the body handles the problem of dissipating force that comes into the skeleton. And I want to show you how quickly it adapts to postural changes to solve that problem over and over again as we move. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two different movement patterns. The first one is just kind of a baseline, and the second one is a modification to that posture. And I want you to see if you can see how quickly my body on a pre-conscious level adapts to that postural change. And we'll explain why that's important too. So the movement pattern I'm going to do, I'm just going to walk back and forth, but I want you to look at the way my arms are swinging, swinging forward and back. So see if you can see with my hands how far back behind my body it goes and how far forward it goes. And I want you to look at that on both arms, okay? So here we go. Now we're going to change up the pattern with the coffee mug. And I'll do that again real quick just so, uh, so it's really obvious. So first with Now, hopefully one of those two times, it was really obvious to you that when I'm not holding the mug, the amount of arm swing is dramatically decreased. Whereas when I hold the mug, the amount of arm swing on the other arm went way up. So why is that? Right? It's not because that mug is really heavy. It's not, I actually drank most of the coffee already. So it's, as you can tell, <laughs> it's not because that's heavy. But if you think about this for a second, Every time my foot hits the floor, there's a rebound of force that comes back up through the skeleton. And that rebound, your body has to deal with that force because it doesn't want that force coming into the body. It wants to do something to dissipate that force, dissipate the shock moving through your system. So where does it go? Well, in gait, in walking, the most obvious place it goes is out your arms. Your arms move freely when you're walking around. And the reason, part of the reason they swing is because they're using, dissipating that force, right? If they don't, the force then comes into the body. And that's actually what you saw in the two different arm swing patterns, right? The first one, where my, both my arms are free, the force gets distributed between the two sides. The second one, the mug doesn't change the weight, the amount of shock moving through the system that much. But what does it do? it closed off one of my outlets because I was holding this arm close to the body. So all of a sudden, as the force comes up through my body, my right arm isn't free to swing and move anymore. And so your body has to adapt right away as soon as I pick up the mug. And I didn't think about that at all, right? You can try this at home and see. You won't, it's not a conscious effort. I better swing my left arm more. No, all of a sudden, think of it like water moving through a canyon or something. There's no outlet there, so it zigs and zags and goes somewhere else where it can come out. Now, and that's why, so, so that's why, right, this comes in, arm comes close to the body, like put the arm in a sling. So the force now, instead of exiting the right side, has to jump over and it comes out, more force comes out the left side. So you saw that left arm swinging more when I was restricting the right arm. So what does that mean? You need to carry your coffee mug equally on the left side and the right side to have balance? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you can get into that. But think about this from a moving joint point of view, okay? If you have joints in the body that are habitually restricted or not moving, and we've talked before about the irony of this problem is that if you have something in their body that's not moving, you can't feel it. So you don't know it's not moving. So this is a whole other problem. But what happens when you have these restricted joints is 
all of a sudden your body adapts. It doesn't say, come on, move your shoulder more, you know, free it up so I can get some force going out through there. It instantaneously says, okay, redistribute the force somewhere else. So maybe that comes up through the neck and your neck starts to get irritated and tweak. Or maybe the spine, the upper spine is really closed down. So the lower spine has to move in funny ways to compensate for that. So when you think about it as a force transmission problem of how do I get this shock moving through the body to clear out as efficiently as possible, your body immediately bypasses the stuff that's shut down and makes something else pick up the slack. So you get all these body parts when you don't have full, full body, correct, healthy movement going on you immediately kick in compensation patterns. And this is where a lot of movement, pa movement problems sort of originate from. So I hope that arm swing demo was clear and uh, try it out, see what happens, and uh, let's talk about this more later.